purpose of my Finding Vegan vlog series was to uh, share my journey starting from a plant-based lifestyle and working towards what I would consider to be a full vegan lifestyle. Some things were easy. The last few weeks I've encountered some things that have been hard. That's what I'm going to share with you guys today. This past week I dealt with a few things. The issue of wallets, the issue of vegan shoes, and whether or not whether or not I think the NFL and related sports are vegan. The, per, major, the majority of this video is going to be about the football aspect. Because I do not believe, after my research and thought, that the NFL game of football is vegan. I'm going to present to you some of the research I found, some of my thoughts and emotions about it, and you can do with that what you will. The first thing I researched was um, where footballs come from, where the NFL footballs come from. As it turns out, all NFL footballs are made by the same company they have ever since the inception of the league. They're made by the company Wilson. You may have seen the W on tennis rackets and baseball gloves, baseball bats, same one. They work with full leather. They make the laces and the bodies of the footballs completely out of leather. Some of the stats I was able to find included um, 700,000 balls are made each year. They're made out of cow skin, not pig skin. The pigskin thing, the pigskin thing, is an old, is an old, old dated term. It goes back to in the beginning of the league when pigs' bladders were used as footballs. That died out a long time ago. But they use cowskin now. One full cowhide apparently makes ten footballs. And the Wilson manufacturing side of the business, um, which is, from what I understand, based in a place called. Ada in Ohio, they produce 4,000 balls a day, 10 balls of cow skin. When I picture footballs, I picture them on the shelves at a Toys R Us or a Walmart, and 10 balls does not equate to a cowhide, in my opinion. But it is not an educated opinion, admittedly. It does still seem like a shame. The other thing I was able to find was something that happened in 2012 with the NFL. From what I understand, in 2012 during preseason, the NFL tried to, they wanted to try something new. They, I guess, distributed Nike footballs, which do not use full leather materials. They use synthetic laces in their balls. And they wanted to try for the second preseason game of the season. They wanted all the teams to use that synthetic lace ball. They allowed the teams to practice with them during the week. Um, leading up to that game in which they would be used for the first time. As far as I can tell, full leather balls are used today. So you can obviously figure what happened. But there are several reports. I read one article from CBS Sports. One from... The NFL.com, one from Deadspin, all reporting that players um, immediately, pretty quickly, comp start to complain about the balls and the idea of using them in a preseason game. There were complaints that the balls caused micro cuts and they completely altered the throwing rotation, the throwing the throwing motions of the players. They're basically their follow through, their th the motion in which they used to throw was completely altered by the fact that the balls had synthetic laces. The last thing I want to read is a quote from the Deadspin article. It's a passage. I don't know if it's a quote of anyone. I think it was just the writer trying to be creative, but it's a passage from the Deadspin article. And I find it I find it polarizing. I think it's interesting when I think about what I would have thought maybe a year ago, what I think now. 
So I'm going to read it, and I'm going to tell you what I think, and you can respond to it as you'd like as well. So the, the author is basically, the article was predicated on this idea that when they were trying out these new balls, that the goal was to, so there was like some conspiracy that the NFL was trying to, there's interesting stories around Nike and the NFL. Um, Nike now makes all the cleats for their athletes. They make the jerseys as well. Reebok used to make the jerseys. I'm not sure if they made the cleats, and Nike supplanted them. There was thoughts that it was possible that in trying out these new balls that the NFL was hoping to have Nike supplant Wilson. And the author obviously had the not obviously the author had the the author of this article seemed to have the opinion that wasn't such a good thing. So here's here's what he wrote. Don't mind us, we're just humble old Wilson, content with our leather, balls and laces, and tennis rackets and baseball gloves. Well, you make your hyperdunks and foam posits. Sure, they're owned by a Finnish multinational, but who isn't nowadays? The NFL and its aesthetically challenged pals, aesthetically challenged pals from Nike, are coming for Wilson and its old-fashioned balls. Rubber laces are lame and phony. Then again, so are backward swooshes, backward swooshes, and they're everywhere now. I wish I would have read that better. Get the full taste of what that was about, but when I read that first, the thoughts that went through my head were, for whatever reason I thought of meat and potatoes. You know. The simple things, the basics. The good old ways. I felt like that's what the author was trying to um associate Wilson with. And Nike being this New age, clunky, over model that is something evil and something to be detested. And a year ago, I might have agreed with them. I used a, I used a leather baseball glove when I was a kid. I've always thrown a leather football. It would have, might have made sense. I might have thought that, you know, Nike's trying to sell all these high-tech gadgets and things like that to get people's money. And that's, it was just a ploy for more money. For a huge business like Nike taking over a small mom-pa business, the Wilson Leather Factory. Now when I read that, it was one thing, when, when I read all this, I, I mean, I can understand the players. I can understand on a level the players complaining about the balls we live in a time where if you have a 98 percent if you have a not a 90 a 58 percent completion percentage versus 61 percent completion percentage if you are on the lower half of that you're considered to be a below par passer if you're on the upper end of that you're considered to be right where you need to be it's a very small it's a very small discrepancy but it matters when it comes to people's opinion of you as a player as a passer of the football when it comes to your legacy eventually. Quarterbacks who throw under 60% are not deemed to be great passers. It's possible that it factors into how much money they make, and there's a lot of money to, on that table for these guys. So on some level, I don't blame them that much for being finicky about the balls that they have. On another level, I view that with contempt now that these pampered, overpaid athletes would uh, stamp out this idea of having a less leather-reliant ball, that they would be proliferating, if that's the right word, um, a company that has solely made its money off animals that were born to be killed. And now that makes me mad. What I think is kind of powerful about this whole thing is, and I've kind of mentioned it a few times, that maybe even three weeks ago, definitely a year ago, I might not have felt, felt this way. I 
I remember, I recall the movie Inception. This notion that, where Leonardo, I remember at the beginning of the movie, Leonardo DiCaprio talks about the idea that an idea can be infectious, that an idea can be, can change everything about you. That an idea can be disastrous, that it can be simple, but still incredibly strong. I think about when I was in middle school. I can still remember the day that the New England Patriots, I'm from New England, when they were going to play the Rams in the Super Bowl. I can remember that day. I can remember the song that they played over the loudspeakers as everyone left, getting everyone hyped up for the game. I can remember Adam Vinatieri kicking that field goal. Just this, just this day, I uh, was driving home from the gym, and someone read a quote. I was listening to sports radio. Sports radio has been a big part of my life. You know, when I worked in Boston, it it, it kept me. It satisfied my drive into the city. It satisfied my drive out. It was a part of my routine, part of what I did, a big part of my life. I spent many hours listening. And today when I was listening, they read a quote from Drew Bledsoe, a quarterback who I remember from when I was a small boy, being the quarterback for the New England Patriots, losing to the Packers in the Super Bowl in what was a devastating day. And he was talking about Tom Brady, and he was talking about you know, how they've reinstated Tom Brady's suspension. And I wasn't thinking things that I normally would have thought, like what I thought about that, Tom Brady getting the suspension back on. And the only thing I could think of was, should I be listening to this? Is it wrong to listen to this? Believing what I now believe. Am I doing something that is not right? Am I doing something that's not vegan? And when I think back to the power of an idea, I think that's incredible that some small notion can change my response to something that I'm very familiar with and make me write it off entirely, even for just a moment. I then think about my family. I think about my little brother who is living in California right now. We are, we are very different individuals. We don't have a ton of things in common, but over the past few years, something that we have shared is interest in football, interest in great players, interest in at least discussing fantasy football with each other. The last time I talked to him, I was asking him, um, it might have been a text, but it was the last time we communicated. Um, I asked him what kind of, what, what he wanted for his birthday, and he told me he wanted an Oakland Raiders hat. And I got that for him. I'm worried about what this new idea, what this new conclusion leads for that. My father and my family, you know, Sunday's a big thing at our house for football and eventually the Super Bowl. And when I told my parents about this, I could see that they were greatly disappointed and concerned. They asked me about it. I told them that I would still be there on Sundays. I didn't know what to say, to be honest. Um, it was it was a challenging moment, and I don't, still don't know what I'm going to do about that, because I do believe that the NFL is not vegan. Knowing what I know, I think the NFL is arrogant. I think <laughs> Wilson should be ashamed of itself. Those are my opinions. And they have completely changed the way I have viewed that sp a sport that I have loved in the past. Something I've shared with people that are important to me. And that is challenging for me. I started the path to veganism because I knew it would be a challenge. The diet part was pretty easy, but it seems that there will be other things along the way that will test me. So, that's all I have to say about that. Hope you guys have enjoyed some of my thoughts. Stay tuned. Seattle Seahawks hat. Patriots.
More Patriots. Patriots blanket. Patriot shirt. Yeah, this is my Darrell Rivas shirt. And the last Patriot shirt. Sorry, Joe. You gotta go too.